three. All right, that's good. Okay. So, yeah, um, just humidifier now. <laughs> that's true. I do have to turn that off. I meant to turn that off before the show, but when I when I logged into OBS, I tr I realized that my entire scene was gone um, because what had happened was last Friday, on the, during the AMA with with Agrid, I um, I had edited everything to record just Discord, and I had created a new profile and everything, and I thought that was sufficient, but apparently it's not. So I lost all of my settings for display and everything. So Right now, uh, either if you're watching the recording or if you're looking on the live stream for our social interactive broadcast on MSV Waves or on Vim or on, uh, we don't have 3Speak anymore because they cut off 24-hour streams, um, Theta, then you'll just see like me with my green screen behind me and you'll see my web browser and one or, or and two more graphics. So I have to rebuild my whole thing. But I did it on behalf of Splinterlands. <laughs> Because Agrid asked me to record as a secondary source. So I did that, and then he ended up not using my recording, which was super. And uh, now we're stuck with uh, stuck with uh, the results. So uh, sometime over the next week, I will have to get back into um, get back into uh, getting my scene looking good. Because, you know, it's all about looking good. I mean, isn't that really the point of life? Uh, <laughs> thank you, Inertia, for having my back. Yeah, it's, it's pretty harsh calling me the second worst DJ. Agro's definitely the worst, but uh, but uh, but apparently I'm at least a bit better than second worst. So, uh, you know, if you're in the chat, you know, you can always do uh, greater than sign worst worst DJ ever. But we got people filtering in. That's always good to see. It takes takes a few minutes. Even with the new webhooks. So Ron did a very cool thing. Um, you know, with the MSP Waves uh, platform, you know, we've got, I don't know how many shows now, a bunch. You can go to msvwaves.com and check out the schedule. But for Discord channels, uh, he's made it so that uh, a Discord can publish a show reminder like we see in the general chat of MSP Waves or the general chat of, of, of Palnet. So, like, the reminder was just published five minutes ago in the Splinterlands Discord. Uh, I don't know if we got it in the Leo Finance Discord or not. Uh, oh, we did. Great. Um, so, so that's working. So that's, that's spamming me in at least two places. And, and Ron says there's more. But, you know, it's, ver it's a very cool function because there's a lot of shows, all different topics. Uh, you know, so there's, there's my show on Splinterlands. Scaredy Cat has, has his investor show. Uh, he's apparently traveling today or this week or something uh, for some real estate stuff so he doesn't have a show um, to uh, he's not going to have a show right after mine like he normally does uh, so the Pulse which is WhatsApp's uh, server that gets all of them and uh, but yeah there's, there's a whole uh, there's a plethora of shows on all different topics so uh, you know if, if you are a, a Discord owner and you want to check those out you know talk to Rondon he's our our magician behind the scenes, who does all the, all the, uh, uh, all the publications. Uh, Man Cave gets them all. See, I'm not even in that server, so that's great. Um, and there's a, so a bunch of servers I have that I don't actually check. So, good to know. Uh, but we actually had a meeting this past week. Um, I guess it was Saturday about the future of MSP Waves and how. Now that everything is automated, uh, the the doors are open for people who want to have their own show. Um, so if you're out there listening, <laughs> whether uh, whether you are uh, you know a seasoned podcaster or you know you just always thought it'd be fun to have a show, then you know that's now a possibility because all of the the legwork has now been uh, has now all been automated, which is all thanks to Rondon. So so that's great. And uh, Krimi's in, in the house. She says, yeah, I just don't like being, I just don't like spamming the pulse because all of my shows just end up being woo, repl woo repl repellent now. <laughs> and woo is what's up, you know, for those not in the know. So, uh, so you'll have to bear with me for the crappy uh, video layout uh, this week, but um, it is what it is. I will fix it. I have to find all my images again and create new scenes and all that jazz. Anyway. Uh, so that's that's kind of the <laughs> the announcement 
for for the moment. Uh, Juan Mancho says, "What is this? A center for ants?" Uh, I don't have a good Zoolander voice, but uh, but yeah. So uh, if you are uh, watching on on video, or if you are watching a replay, or listening to one of the podcasts. You know, definitely, if you can, you know, make the live show. It's it's way better because uh, you can you can troll me with memes in the chat, and uh, it's just it's just more fun that way. So, <laughs> uh, you know, it's just it just adds a certain something. Anyway, uh, there are a bunch of things I want to talk about this week. Uh, so first on the list is actually the election. <laughs> so I know it's not a, a political podcast. But uh, tonight is the first debate between Biden and Trump, and I am I pub I published it I published it on Twitter uh, that this is the first time in I can't even tell you um, how long that uh, I said it's amazing to me that I'm actually considering watching a presidential debate, not to learn what the candidates will do. Uh, promises are almost never kept, but for sheer entertainment value, because I I I honestly think that Trump is just going to destroy Biden. And not on not on substance, but just on style, uh, because you know, uh, you know, Biden has not has not been uh, has not been, you know, has not been killing it in the live performances. Let's say, and you know, without you can't even read a teleprompter without going off script, which is kind of uh, kind of amazing. So uh, I'm I'm looking forward to that. I might actually watch it live. I haven't watched a live presidential debate since probably. Bush Clinton in 92. Uh, <laughs> is he still alive? So, uh, so again, it doesn't matter what your stances are on the actual substance of the issues because it doesn't matter. It's, it's entirely about the, the spectacle, as, at least as far as I'm concerned. So, uh, you know, we have the election game and, you know, we have uh, Gerbot's, uh, you know, links. So, I, I am hoping to see some action out of the election game, uh, you know, tonight, tomorrow. And uh, so right now we're up to 3,530 swapped out hive. And, you know, maybe maybe we'll get some, you know, some people placing some positions uh, over this um, <laughs> over this debacle. <laughs> and, uh, and, yeah, I'm just looking forward to it. So... That I just wanted to get that out of the way, you know, a little, little, sort of a public service announcement. In Splinterlands news, uh, you know, things are happening with uh, with the NFT markets on Hive Engine, and uh, you know, deck is pumping. Uh, it's all. <laughs> Crim says it's like Grandpa versus Grandpa mud wrestling by verbal proxy. I don't even. <laughs> Quantum Nacho says 2020 in general. Uh, it's true. It's true. Uh, so, you know, there's, there's lots of stuff happening on, on Hive Engine as far as, uh, you know, they're, they're making it so that anybody's going to be able to create an NFT type game, which is kind of the uh, Slenderlands is the model of. Uh, so if you had an idea and you wanted to uh, create a collection of things, uh, you know, you just need some artwork apparently, and you fill out a form online and presto changeo magic happens and you have a NFT collection of some sort so that's cool and all uh and from the Splinterlands perspective that's that's important and significant because you know that's that's potential traffic that comes to the hive ecosystem and uh, as we all know the game is user growth um and we'll talk about that a bit more in just a second but um you know the more people who are interacting with hive engine the more people find Splinterlands. the more people who find Splinterlands, the more people who get involved in the Splinterlands game in, in any number of ways. Um, so like what like one of the ways, you know, we've got Deck 101 and Deck 404. So Deck 101 is a service where, you know, if you want to burn a card, you're better off sending it to Deck 101 because we'll, we'll pay you more for it. And it's, you know, three second block time, you send the card, you get paid in Dark Energy Crystals. Deck 404 is different in that it's it's the uh, it's the playing deck, D-E-C-K, um, it's a playing deck uh, rental service or splitting service. So an owner delegates um, uh, delegates cards to an account. A player comes in and plays that account, you know, completes quests and, and whatever. And then the rewards are split automatically 50-50. Uh, so we are, we are always in search of, of owners who want to delegate cards uh, because that's, that's the bottleneck. We have plenty of players who want to play 
and we are getting our first accounts that aren't just me or Gerber um, up and running as we speak, and those should be live and playing you know, as soon as the owner uh, finishes doing his delegations. Delegations is kind of a pain, uh, but Peak Monsters makes it makes it pretty easy. Um, so, you know, it's uh, it's doable. And then once you have it set up, it's it's set it and forget it. So you d you just sit back and receive your payments. And um, you know th those payments. So like I've got I don't know how many. Uh, let me check. I've got let's go to deck four hundred four. I have sixty five. Uh, 64 and then 8 so I've got 72 accounts playing because uh, I have a ton of cards <laughs> and they uh, you know I'm, I'm bringing in for my 50% even after the collection power which is which has reduced it a bit I'm bringing in I don't know 250,000 a season some 300,000 a season something like that uh, I'll be able to tell you here shortly because uh, season is about to end where are we with that uh, we have 17 hours remaining uh, on the season. So in 17 hours, or not exactly, 17 hours plus, you know, whenever the next uh, distribution occurs, I will have my season total and be able to tell you how much my 15% was. But um, so I didn't do any changes with the with the collection power. Um, so some of my accounts have, you know, 50,000 in cards. Some of them have 3 million in cards in collection power. And... Um, you know, what I should do is I should, you know, move those around a bit so they're, they're more even. But um, just just haven't, uh, haven't felt the need. And I kind of wanted to do an experiment to see what the changes are. So it looks like my my quest rewards are down now 25% or so. Which, honestly, is not bad. Uh, I was expecting, like, much worse. Um, but, you know, between the, the increase in, in battle crystal winnings and uh, you know some packs I do have a couple accounts in in the packs runnings for, on different leaderboards uh, so that'll that'll skew things a bit but yeah I mean you know having having a, having playing accounts that have real cards in them rather than the level one farming craft uh, has not I've, you know so I've had like I said like I said like a 25% decrease but um, but not anywhere near as bad as I thought it might be uh, <laughs> Quan Machos is still on about Trump. Said Biden could take Trump in a mud wrestle match. All he would need to do is tell Trump he was fired on live TV. Then the rumble cage drops from the ceiling and the floor opens to the mud pit. The mud pit would be a sickly orange by the end of the match as all Trump's spray tan wears off. <laughs> yeah, that sounds gross and hilarious. Uh, speaking of leaderboards, so I've been in the Diamond le uh, League all this season. I, I wanted to try it out, see how it went. And it's been challenging. So I was, you know, battling. Uh, you know, I pretty much only do daily quests. But I was battling, uh, you know, up, down, up, down, up, down. I got up to like 25 or so. So I was, I was into the packs because uh, for Diamond, I think it's the top 40 wins something. Yeah, top 40. So I was into the 5 range and I had just barely cracked the 10 pack uh, uh, tier, which is uh, numbers... Uh, 11 through 25 and then so I was like I was like number 23 or 24 or something like that so then you know I go away for because I don't really play on the weekends I come back on Monday and I had gone up in the leaderboard to number 18 so uh, I was like hmm, that's interesting I, I'm actually rising in rank you know in ordinal rank uh, by not playing because the the top guys are battling against each other and without the win streak bonus and without the minimum increase then uh they're doing a lot poorer so like at uh, number one we got coco joko which uh is at a has, has a rating of 4311 which is super high considering you can't get uh, a win bonus once you're over the threshold for champion uh, 382 battles, 307 wins, max streak of 24. I beat him a bunch of times, so I'm kind of surprised he's as high as he is. Uh, and then Taug is, or Taug, I don't know how you pronounce that, is tied for number one at the same exact rating. 219 battles, 171 wins, max streak of 22. And they are they are tied for, for getting 50 packs each. Um, so I really don't have any hope of, of catching those. So I'm, I'm not going to worry about it. If I, if I really, really... 
uh, tried, I might be able to get into the 15 packs uh, at the top 10, which right now Bathy's number 10 at 4,096, and I'm at 4,029. But, you know, when you, when you factor in the amount of time it would take and, and risk level uh, to having it worked at all, um, I just haven't been playing since, uh, since Friday. And I've been, you know, ri either staying steady or rising a little bit in the, in the ranking numbers. Um, so right now I'm at number 17, uh, which is, you know, kind of crazy to me. I've never, I haven't won packs since, like, the second or third season of Splinterlands, which was back in 2018. It's just, uh, so, you know, it's, it's fun. Um, and, you know, Diamond's been tough as hell. And, uh, Quantum Nacho is saying Champion has been hard as well. He's been stuck under 100-ish under Champ 2 for like five days now. So, yeah, there's, there's a lot more gamesmanship, uh, with this change as far as, you know, where do you want to place yourself? How strong is your deck? How strong is your competition? All that kind of stuff. Rather than just trying to grind, grind, grind for everything. Because it was so like ten packs, you know, if we go to go to Leo decks, let's see what Untamed are going for. Uh, they are going for 70, 75 cents. Um, so let's do seventy five cents times ten, right? So that's seven seven dollars fifty cents. Compared to my usual rewards, that's a huge amount. <laughs> So, uh, and Paul's asking, do you think there should be some sort of forced play? Just sitting and not playing for days on end seems odd. I do not think there should be forced play. I think that's, uh, like, so in my case, I think it's a perfectly valid strategy to let my, com my competitors beat themselves up and, and push me up the ranks. Obviously, you're not going to win first place with that uh, kind of strategy, but, you, but, you know, I, apparently you can win 17th place uh, with that. And for me, I'm perfectly happy with that. So... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, and yeah, you could always play tournaments, like Gerber says. Uh, so, you know, it's it's added a surprising amount uh, to the game. I, I've been well, I've been surprised that, that this change is, has changed the environment so dramatically uh, just by implementing the, the leaderboards. Uh, and Gerber is saying there's some messed up battle history with Coco Joko. I don't know. Uh, probably a bot, but, you know, whatever. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's an interesting, an interesting dynamic that I've observed. And so probably for next season, uh, I'll, maybe I'll advance to champion and, and see how that goes, uh, and see if the increase in quest rewards and season rewards is worth missing out on the packs. I tend to think it won't be, but I'll give it a try because, you know, I have the collection power to, to play anywhere. I've got the, what do I have on this? got 8 million <laughs> collection power on this and that's that's because I've got a lot of uh, alpha gold foil cards and, and things so uh, that is not a normal deck but uh, but you know it's fun I, I like having the golds um, so Quan Macho says I used to use that strategy for a long time not touching the matches the first 7 to 10 days then grinding out 1200 rating in a few days yeah I know I know Yasek uh, has done that uh, to, to great success um you know, using the the win streak bonuses to, to kind of catapult up the ranks in the last couple of days. So, um, so yeah, that's certainly doable. Um, I don't know if it, so. I don't think that would work in the in the uh, in the placement on the leaderboards now because once you hit that max level, you stop getting the win bonuses. So you have to grind from that point onwards. So if you're if you're looking for those top very top spots, I think you need to be participating the whole way through and and be winning the whole way through um so you know just something to keep in mind but if you want to if you want to get into the middle of the pack like i am perfectly valid strategy so like in diamond uh you know so let's see bring up the leagues diamond goes up to 3700 once you're over 3700 all that win bonus stuff stops and, and so the, from 3,700 to 4,000 has just been, you know, the grind of the daily, uh, the daily uh, quests for me. So uh, it's interesting. Also uh, for Diamond, you know, it might be for the other ones as well. The, um, in the beginning half of the season, you get matched up with anybody in a, in a close rating uh, bracket. So, uh, you know, because there's overlap between Diamond 1 and Champion 3, then you'll get some champion plays. But in the second half of the season, 
the uh, the champion and the diamond players get separated. So from then on, you're just playing diamond matches. And uh, you know, so like like for me, I'm I'm at four thousand. If I'm playing, then I'm going to be matched around you know the people who are around me, and it, you know, and so we're we're really jockeying for position in that leaderboard. And uh, and uh, you know, if you're winning, great. If you're losing, then you're you're costing yourself packs, which is a pretty pretty significant hit. So you know, overall, it's just it's just added another layer of of complexity that I am a surprising, an unexpected fan of. I didn't think it was going to be that big a deal. Uh, so that is <laughs> that's a long way of saying that uh, it's cool, man. I like it. Good job, team. Uh, speaking of the team, I had mentioned that uh, I was going to talk about some, some user stuff. So I caught the AMA uh, with Agro last Friday. Uh, this time is at 3 p.m., which was a reasonable time that I could actually attend. And uh, he talked about a couple important things. So uh, as, far as, uh, as far as users and, and potential exposure to the Splitterlands, uh, Splitterlands uh, ecosystem, so there's two main things. So one was, <laughs> uh, you know, he he gave us a teaser, a teaser of a teaser. So they, he signed some some deal with some company, and he can't tell us what until until early October after the hard fork, uh, when they actually launched their their whatever marketing campaign, and it's geared towards user acquisition. Apparently, this other partner has millions of users and. They're going to be promoting Splinterlands in some kind of form or fashion. And uh, like I said, they, they wanted to wait because of the hard fork coming up on on October 6th, I think. Um, they're waiting till after that to make sure there's no issues with onboarding people. But um, other than that, you know, there's... So it's some big thing that's coming. So it's basically an announcement of an announcement, uh, which is, you know, standard, standard in the crypto world these days. <laughs> uh, the other thing, though was a digicon so this is this is a pretty cool thing i've actually looked at the um i looked at the uh the platform that he's using um basically there's going to be a virtual convention hall and there's going to be all these all these rooms and uh there's going to be all these different booths of different companies so there's going to be finance companies gaming companies art companies and uh people can walk around listen to speakers and uh, interact with the different booths if for whatever offering that booth has, whether it's like a video or an actual person there standing, uh, waiting to talk to people. And it's, I think it's going to be super cool. Um, and of course, Splinterlands is, is presenting the whole thing and will have, uh, I imagine, a prominent, uh, uh, prominent uh, presence there. So I would expect to see all the Hive Engine jazz, like NFT showroom, and uh, at Splitterlands and Lindsay and all those kind of things uh, to, to be represented there. And, you know, hopefully we could drum up some, uh, some, some excitement about it and all these different uh, gaming companies and, and crypto places can tell their users about it and everybody comes together and cross-pollinates all their different uh, user bases. Uh, so the, the environment itself is going to be persistent and uh, so people can log in whenever and go to these different booths, but the uh, the convention aspect of it, in the sense that there will be speakers and everything, is going to be monthly. So I'm looking forward to that. I think it'll be I think it'll be pretty cool. Um, the other th another thing he mentioned uh, during the AMA was land presale launch in October. And I take full credit for this, that it's going to happen in October, because I, on, on one of Agro's weekly uh, MSP Waves shows, I was kind of giving him crap about how it's like, well, you know, you said by the end of the year, so I'm expecting like December 31st, you're going to launch something. It's like, no, 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 for pre-sale, we can do it faster, blah, blah, blah. So now he's, he's had to own up to his own, uh, his own talking points there. And so he's saying that it's going to be in October, uh, that the pre-sale for the lands uh, goes goes live, and that's pretty exciting. Uh, so I know Quantum Nachos is is building a fund for people who want to pool their dark energy crystals and uh, get some of those larger discounts. Uh, I know some of the guilds are doing the same thing. Uh, I know there's been some chatter about it amongst the Immortal Gods uh, crew. 
Uh, so, you know, I expect there to be a bunch of, of sales once that goes online. And I expect the amount of dark energy crystals floating around in the ecosystem to, to drop precipitously. Uh, so if we go to uh, deck, so deck's been been doing really well over the past little while. You can see the chart here. This is in hive terms, and then in uh, in uh, USD terms, it's even better. Uh, you can use the Gerbot command deck USD. So you can see that spike over the last uh, week or so, and you know this is all in anticipation, I think, of lands. Uh, so, you know, expect those to, to kind of vanish. And if we go to the, to the info page, and that's, I've kind of started using Leo Dex for everything. Uh, so we can see that the circulating supply is 486 million. Uh, so that's, you know, 80% something, uh, you know, that hasn't been burned. And we can look at the rich list there. Rich list deck, which is a banjo command. And so Null has 183 million, which is a big chunk. Quite much of says, I expect that the closer this gets, my pre sale pool will likely grow to 20 to 30 million deck. That could be. It could be. Uh, so, you know, every 7.5 million is a um, is a thousand, uh, a thousand plots. Uh, well, a, a thousand claims on plots, because, you know, the plots aren't created until the actual land expansion is done but um yeah i expect so there's my understanding at least at this point is that there's going to be a hundred thousand plots in the first expansion and you know if you're if you're buying the seven and a half million pack uh for the pre-sale that's that's a thousand uh plots which i i realized matt clark corrected me last week i can't remember which is which one's a sector one's a zone uh let's see if i can find it sector Okay, so a zone is a hundred and a sector is a thousand. All right, um, and that's from from my AMA notes. So the sectors, uh, so there's a hundred sectors in the land expansion. I expect probably I don't know, fifteen or twenty of those to be sold just immediately, and then the rest will be, you know, over time. Uh, there were some interesting questions about the um, about the management of of those plots. Um, and it, it, Agard went into a little more detail than he has before um, in that, so obviously because it's going to be NFT just like the cards are, that there's going to be, you're going to be able to rent your plot or sell your plot, you know, if you want to, to outsource management. Um, but he also said that there were going to be summoners and monsters working in the various buildings. And that's not going to be set and forget because conditions will change. And so the, your optimal assignments of those summoners and monsters will change. So you gotta, you got to have to think about that. So I'm planning on buying a sector. Uh, I'm saying there will only be 10 sectors in the first pre-sale. Uh, in the pre-sale, possibly. Uh, but I'm pretty sure I heard him say in the total expansion there will be um, 100,000 plots. Uh, but they might, they might cut that for the pre-sale just to make sure that there's others available for the actual launch. Uh, there's going to be a lands dashboard of some sort, uh, which would be cool. Um, also, if you don't want to buy 100, they're doing a one free one free plot with every 10. And then once you get to 100, the 15% kicks in. Uh, you know, so, uh, but, you know, the, the having the summoners and monsters change over time as far as, as, far as uh, optimizing things uh, was pretty interesting. Because, so, I'm going to buy a sector, so that means I'm going to have a thousand of these things. And I'm going to have to build buildings on all these things, uh, or at least a, a fraction of them. Uh, and then you have to upgrade them and then have to assign. So, I mean, it's starting to sound like a lot of work. And uh, obviously, everything is on blockchain, so you will be able to have tools to, uh, to deal with these kinds of things. To, um, uh, uh, to you know, manage at scale. But I, I don't know if the tools will be sufficient uh, to get the best out of it. And, and renting might end up being a really viable option. But, you know, but we'll see. Uh, a, another thing we got out of the AMA was the collection power, phase four, which is that uh, collection power is going to be integrated into tournaments. So that's coming soon. And uh, already they're seeing results that uh, basically 
dark energy crystal inflation has shrunk by uh, 30 million per month, which is a huge number. Uh, <laughs> considering, you know, there's, there's only 486 million circulating, you know, and a lot of that's going away soon. Uh, you know, but uh, that, that is nothing but, nothing but good news for the price of dark energy crystals. And then after, after that's done, then Guild Wars is the next priority. Uh, you know, getting the faction points system working, uh, getting the anytime kind of battles working, and those faction points are going to be spendable in some way in the game on land or building uh, buffs and things like that. Uh, something that just launched, uh, if you were paying attention to the to the Hive blog stuff, is that uh, Hive Engine is launching B Chat, which is an on uh, or I guess a second layer chat solution for uh, Hive applications. Uh, so now places like uh, like Leo Finance or Palnet or um, you know SplinterTalk.io, you know all these people, all these places will be able to integrate uh, chats into their websites, which is, I think, you know, four years past due. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I, and I'm wondering if uh, Splinterlands is going to, is going to integrate some of that. So like in the guild, uh, in the guild tab, you have guild chat, uh, in, you know, in the tavern, but you know, it's, it's not very organized. Um, so, you know, may, I haven't, I haven't seen B chat yet. I haven't seen it in production. I, I haven't used it. So I don't know how well their their chat function is going to work, other than other than just saying that it does work at at some level. Uh, but there's some announcement about that. Uh, I think that's going to be good for the overall ecosystem, in that uh, you know having chat in a social media ish site is good. <laughs> you know? uh, and Quantum Notch doesn't say he suspects that there's going to be splinter related cards that do best in each splinter type land. So fire monsters, fire. Yeah, I think I think that is true. Uh, but you know, as to like, you know, maybe in in a certain building on a certain condition, then you want some a monster with sh with uh, with armor, or you want a monster with a magic attack, and then you'll have to switch out uh, monsters and, and summoners, you know, over time as those conditions change, and that's that's where that management is going to come in. Uh, more stuff from uh, from the AMA. We got ERC twenties. So uh, because there's now MetaMask. Um, integration and and all that jazz behind it they can accept erc 20s as payment which was already a thing uh but that but now we can integrate we can pay out erc 20s as tournament prizes and this is pretty exciting to me for the appeal to gamers on on the ethereum uh, platforms uh, so that they can get paid in the ways that that they you know prefer uh so like if let's say Let's just say for giggles, uh, Uniswap wanted to run a promotion in that they're going to sponsor a Splinterlands tournament and they're going to give out uni tokens as prizes, then they could do that. Um, obviously, they have to factor in the gas fees of everything to make sure the numbers work out for themselves and, um, and all that stuff because Ethereum has that, has that problem. But, you know, as long as, as long as they can come up with a system that works for them, then that is totally doable. And, you know, with this, with this integration with, with, other, uh, with other chain tokens beyond the Hive system, so, you know, uh, Splinterlands is going beyond Hive um, in that it's, it, you know, it's now integrating with Wax and EOS and, and Ethereum, and I think that is, that is a great thing. It's using Hive as, as a technological base and using the blockchain as, you know, the... Uh, the, the publication of of data for you know the um, uh, for you know the, the battle mechanics and card transfers and NFTs and, and all that kind of stuff, but it's not using it's not really using the platform. You know, it's it started there, started with Steam, and and grew there, but now it's it's reaching beyond to other things, which I think is a hugely positive development. And uh, related to that, uh, Agrid was saying uh, scaling the scaling phase. Uh, of the game is, is starting in October. So, you know, up until now, it's been, uh, you know, the kind of the birth phase, you know, development, getting the game working. So, you know, the, the OGs remember when there was no game, it was just trading cards. 
It's like, oh, well, I have this dragon, and you know, will you trade me for that frost giant, and you know, things like that. Uh, and then there was the game, which has gone through obviously several iterations, and uh, now they feel they have the infrastructure developed to the point where they can start to take it to market, and that that is the 10x, 100x, um, you know, growth trajectory that we've all been clamoring for and asking for uh, for the last two years. And now, uh, apparently, it's it's right around the corner. So that's that's very exciting. Um, so, you know, they're in the Ubisoft, um, uh, uh, I want to say Y Combinator, but uh, the Incubator. And according to Ubisoft, the, the beginning levels of success, where you start to kind of matter, is 50,000 daily active users. And when we look at the, at the Hive data, um, at the user statistics, we can see that we are not anywhere near there. Um, we are at, uh, let's see, latest is 57.56. But hang in, you know, with, with season endings, you know, plus or minus around 6,000. Then a little bit down since the collection power has come in. Uh, but, you know, that's to be expected with, with some of those, bo those low-level bots getting knocked out. And Foggy Bottom said it would be great to hit that 50k with real players this next year. And I absolutely agree. That would be fantastic. But we're talking about, that's a 10x from where we are now. Um, and that is, you know, just imagine how much the price of Dark Energy Crystals would have to rise in order for that to be real. Because, you know, as those users come on, come on board and start playing, then your per battle winnings are going to decrease, uh, you know, 10x. <laughs> so if you're getting 80 now, you're going to get 8 uh, Dark Energy Crystals. Uh, so that's going to be a huge uh, swing in things. And, you know, as the, as, the, as the demand for Dark Energy Crystals goes up, the price should go up because the supply is, you know, not fixed, but the, the inflation rate is constant. So I would expect to see cards, you know, rocket up in price uh, as, as that Dark Energy Crystal floor rises. Uh, so, you know, time to load up, I guess, <laughs> is what I'm saying. Uh, we've only really grown 3x since Jan 2019. And that's, I mean, I don't think that's bad. Uh, you know, it's, it's certainly not 20x, it's not 100x, but it's, you know, for, for, for completely organic growth that has done, like, no marketing, aside from, you know, some, some interviews here and there, uh, I, I think that's, that's pretty decent. Um, and, you know, that's, uh, and we've seen how the, the market value of market cap of all the cards and, and the ecosystem in general has, has grown over that time. So I'm, I'm perfectly happy with that. Uh, how many of that growth is new bots? I mean, some, not, not as much as, as people are worried about. Um, because, you know, you can see it in the, in the market cap of the cards. And th that's holding up, so... Um, so whatever, whatever bot activity there is, is, you know, just part of the, part of the, the ecosystem. Um, <clears throat> other mentions that were not as, as, um, significant, I didn't take a whole lot of notes on them. You know, Yab has been focused on the scaling aspects behind the scenes as far as making sure the game is ready to, to, uh, actually handle that, that increase in, in, uh, in system use, you know load balancing and things like that. Uh, the ambassadors program, uh, somebody had asked about that that's on hold due to COVID. Uh, they're looking to, um, to do promotions, you know, roughly once a quarter. So I guess this, this thing with the millions of users is going to be one of them. And um, hopefully we'll get like a Christmas thing or a New Year thing and, uh, and then, you know, on, onward from there. And uh, one kind of thing he threw in at the end was that art, you know, looking for ways to build in governance to allow players to influence things. Because, you know, we, if you look in, in the chat, people are constantly complaining about, like, tournament payouts and, like, the structure of things. Like, should it be the people who have the same record go on to the, quali to, to the finals round? Or should it just be an X percent? Or, you know, everybody has a different opinion. So if they created some kind of governance system where... You hold, I don't know, Dark Energy Crystals or Splinter Talk or whatever it is, and you know that enables you to vote on which version of things you would prefer. Then, I think that would be uh, a good way to offload that problem 
onto the community itself rather than just having everybody bitch and aggro. <laughs> so, um, you know, and, and there could be other cool things too, like uh, like skins and and um, you know naming rights and, and things like that. Uh, and Quantum is saying it feels like until Alpha reaches 50k cards left through organic growth, things could stay stagnant price-wise versus beta and the rest of the high-volume cards. Eh, maybe. Um, I, I don't think the the absolute numbers matter so much. Uh, you know, Alpha is always going to be. You know, it's got the least amount of cards. It's going to be a low-volume deal. Uh, you know, higher price, lower volume. That's that's sort of the way it goes, and that's on a relative basis between Alpha, Beta, and Untamed. Um, so yeah, I mean, people, people complain about the, the advancement structure in tournaments. People complain about how many tournaments are for the Untamed Edition versus Beta versus Alpha versus Gold Foil versus Regular Foil, all that stuff. L let the community decide, um, and then you could take it out on each other. <laughs> so that's, 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 I think, a good plan. Um... Somebody in, uh, I already forgot who, somebody in the Mavericks chat was talking about the Splinter Talk token, which is SPT. And so I built a little thing. Uh, you can check out the settings on this page. And it's a whole bunch of gobbledygook. But um, basically what you want to look at is... Uh, I've already lost it. So that's the reduction, end blocks. Okay, so max autoclave amount is 96,000. And... Let's see, block. Ah, uh, here we go. Rewards token. So rewards token is 10, and rewards every N block is 3. So what that's saying is, oops, um, is that, it, you know, 10 SPT tokens are sent out every 3 blocks, which is, which should be every 9 seconds. Sometimes it's not because Hive Engine has, you know, problems every now and then. And so uh, somebody was wondering about the inflation of that. And that comes out to, uh, if you if uh, the blocks were every three seconds perfectly on time for an entire year, that would work out to, or for an entire day, that would work out to 96,000 per day. But then there is a reduction uh, parameter where every 5.256 million blocks, which should be 182.5 days, which is half a year, every half a year, they reduce the the issuance by 0.5 percent. So, um, you know, so we know that the max is 96,000 per day, but I I don't know from these settings anywhere where the the where we are in that reduction schedule. So I know Split and Talk's been around for hmm, a year or so, so uh, we should be a bit below that 96,000, but uh, hard to tell exactly. Um, the 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 readouts on the on the token issuances like this are are pretty tough, but um, but you know you could say roughly ninety to ninety five thousand uh, splinter talk tokens are up for grabs every single day. So uh, if you haven't checked it out, this is splinter talk, uh, and it's all splinter Man's related content, uh, which is which is super fun. It's it's one of the nitrous uh, tribes uh, on Hive Engine. And there is, I don't know if the forum is still in existence, actually. Nah, doesn't look like it. Um, but, uh, but yeah, you can see that there is 56 million in circulation. And most of those are staked. So, you know, if you want to share your Splinter Lens content, it's, it's a good way to go. Also, I found that, so I've been posting replays uh, of this show on, obviously it goes to YouTube, but also um, I've been posting on Publish Zero X or Publish O X, however you want to call it, and I've been getting uh, there's a good bit of, of content there. So something to consider, a way to get um, to get other you know other tokens. You get Bat and ETH and I don't know what else. Uh, I think there was one other thing I get paid in, a loop ring, whatever that is. And you know, I, I haven't really been promoting it much, but uh, maybe you know a buck. <laughs> Is that audio only, Neil? Uh, is what audio only? That's Krimi asking questions. Because uh, I have my web stream set up. Never thought about putting things there, but it might be worth publish. Uh, publish your ex. It's, it's a blog. You can do whatever. 
so like here is the replay post from last week it's really the exact same thing as what's on hive uh it has my has my gif and at the top it's got the embedded youtube from from the recording and then all my links and stuff uh so yeah i don't make posts <laughs> we know you don't make posts Graham. Uh, you know, because we've all been asking you to for like years, but uh, that's okay. We still, we still love you. Uh, <laughs> doesn't make posts about shows. Sure, sure. Whatever you got to tell yourself. Uh, anyway, <laughs> and now she's arguing me. I have a post. I do. I have them. Sure, sure. Uh, as far as as far as ranked games, you know, uh, even though a lot of the low level bot farms have been cut out, uh, games have been. It's been uh, holding uh, pretty solid over the last month. Happy to see that. Um, and uh, but you know the the big story has been has been dark energy crystals. So you know if you go to Peak Monsters and I do this every day, at the top of the market page, you get a current price feed. Do, do, do. That guy right there. So right now it's at 68.42, which is in ten thousandths of a cent. So you know par value is is ten thousand on on this scale. Uh, so we're at we're at seventy percent of par, which is which is much higher than it has been. Uh, you know I've been tracking it daily since uh, the uh, just about two months. So since the end of July for for deck 101 purposes, and at you know it's fluctuated at that time, you know from like. You know, 5,000, uh, I think we hit in the fours at a couple points. Yeah, you know, here's one, September 6th was 47.77. And now we're all the way up to, this morning was actually 72.32. So we're seeing like 50% swings over the over the month in terms of U.S. dollar value of dark energy crystals. Um, <laughs> uh, Nacho's saying it's kind of sad we know more about land and its inner workings than boss battles, and that's been promised for two years. Yeah, boss battles, I think, will be a thing eventually. I am not holding my breath on that one. So, um, so yeah, I mean, the, the whole the whole story has been people buying up dark, dark energy crystals in anticipation of lands. And, you know, so, uh, you know, prices... I, I think the pre-sale is going to knock out you know, the vast majority of dark energy crystals that are floating around uh, in fairly short order. And those will go into the, uh, the coffers of Splinterlands to be... And, you know, a good chunk of that will come back out over time as, as tournament rewards. Uh, but it's going to be spread out over a huge amount of time. So, you know, in, in the near term, you know, supply is just going to be, you know, dramatically reduced. And, uh, you know, I expect prices to rise. So... You know, I, I don't think it's one of those things where it's too late now. Um, I think there's still plenty of, plenty of upside to go. Uh, let's go back to the market here. So what price exactly? I don't know. Um, let's look at the depth here. What about coffers? Part of that is J69 dumping deck. Yeah, it's, he J69, I guess, still has some. I haven't really been following his stuff. Um, but, you know, he's, he's sold a lot. Uh, I don't know how much he has left. Um, according, apparently, according to Gerbot, he's got 50 million left. So that's a bunch. Um, but, you know, the, the appetite is, is there. You can see that right now uh, the big cells come in at about 0 0.004774. So, uh, 0 .004. convert that, to uh, Oops. Convert that to uh, U.S. dollars because that's in swap.hive. So we're talking, uh, you know, 74 uh, cents per thousand, uh, which, you know, par value is dollar per thousand. So, you know, uh, there's, there's still, there's still st gains to be had, I think. Uh, we were talking a bit about uh, if Dark Energy Crystal could ever get above par value, and I think it can because the you know the market feedback mechanics are are slow because uh, you know there's there's the daily inflation from battles and from from loot chest rewards, and 
then there is you know the the buying and you know the burning through uh through potions and, and those kinds of things but you know now that potions are part of loot chests that aren't usable on rewards cards a lot of those potions are no longer needed to be bought uh, for opening packs because you get so many through through rewards so you know i i can easily see a situation where dark edge crystal prices spike above par value and then just kind of grind down over time uh, through the inflation mechanisms to get back to par and then spike up and then grind down and then spike up and then grind down um you know so <laughs> apparently uh not just ask j69 how much you have left in your accounts it says 20 million deck and 50,000 worth of cards is a rough guess um you know so that's that's a bunch uh, but you know that's you know that's not that much in terms of the daily volumes that we're seeing now so one of the great things about leo decks is that it publishes volume uh so you know we're seeing uh, on a on a low day which this day has been so far we're seeing as i count the zeros people need to put commas in their numbers so, you know, 4.3 million deck has traded hands today, and yesterday was 9.7 billion. So, you know, having 20 million or, or 50 million, yeah, it's a couple days worth of supply, but that could be eaten up, you know, pretty easily. Uh, you know, last time, I don't know about the last time, one of the times J69 dumped Dark Energy Crystals on the market, you know, I bought a bunch, I know Zachary bought a bunch, and uh, that was down at 0.20, uh, swap that hive. But what's that side? That side is Leo Dex. So it's a different front end to uh, Hive Engine, which, you know, it just looks way, way better. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm a huge fan of the UI of Leo Dex over Hive Engine. There are a couple little things that it doesn't have, uh, but generally not an issue. I mean, the volume alone is, uh, is worth it. So, so, yeah, I mean, I'm not that concerned about J69's bag and, and him selling it, so... Uh, you know, I'm up 150% on the last time I bought off J69, so <laughs> perfectly happy for him to dump some more on the market, depress prices, and let me scoop up some more. Because, you know, I think there's, I think we're, we're hitting par value as soon as Land's pre-sale comes out. Um, and the, uh, you know, so from here, that's another 50% upside, basically. Uh, so, you know, if you want to make a 50% trade, then, then do that. Uh, you know, there are other things in crypto, obviously, where you can make more than 50%. So, you know, I've been a, a mega bull on, on Leo uh, and, and wrapped Leo. It got listed on, on CoinMarketCap today, which is super exciting. You know, Cal, who's the guy who runs things over there, he's been getting all kinds of, uh, you know, requests from, you know, some legitimate, some not, as far as like, oh, you know, we'll have you on our on our platform and talk about your stuff and you know we'll we'll list you on our you know exchange in the middle east or whatever <laughs> so uh you know who knows how much how much of that is real but uh just the fact that there is attention coming into the ecosystem i think is a positive because you know there's plenty of posts on on leo finance about splinterlands i post the replay of the show on the leo finance interface uh so you know there's there's a lot of cross-pollination to be had there uh and Foggy Bottom says, Leo works well as a platform. Yeah, it certainly does. Uh, honestly, I have not looked at, at Hive, uh, at Hive blogs, uh, like on Peak D or anything, in a few weeks. And basically, I just look at, I just look at Leo Finance, and that's, that's kind of it. So, <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but um, that's, that's where my interests lay. And look at me. I'm on the, I'm on the top of the, uh, I don't know, you know what you call it, the above the fold section. I, I was in that top left big box earlier, but then Cal knocked me out uh, with his post. He makes like double what I do on, on any given post, which is kind of annoying, but uh, you know, he's the grand poobah of Leo, so I guess that makes some kind of sense. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, super exciting stuff to, going on there. And you know, we've had a huge up spike in, in uh, traffic on, on Leo Finance. So, you know, those people are getting exposure to splinterlands because there is splinterlands content there so there's just a quickie thing for that you see traffic's basically doubled uh yesterday uh i, I don't know what the what the time is on this it might be utc uh so yeah traffic is way up and 
you know, the more people come in, the more people get exposed to Splitterlands, the higher prices go in the Splitterlands ecosystem. So I'm, I'm a fan all around, basically. It's a, it's a, what do they call it? A virtuous cycle rather than a, rather than a death spiral. It's a virtual cycle. It goes up, creates more, it goes up some more, creates more, it goes up. So all in all to the good. Um, as always, I do like to t keep an eye on my collection value. Uh, let's do neil.cards. Let's see what I got. Because it's a good barometer. Um, just because I have such a wide variety of cards. Eh, pretty steady from last week. 62. Right there. And, uh, yeah, so. Uh, oh, I am kind of curious. I have a bunch of dice that I haven't opened yet because... Because I have all these uh, deck 404 accounts, I have these potions on these other accounts that I kind of got to manage the timing to make sure I don't get caught up in a distribution cycle because <laughs> that would be bad. Um, but I have you know a whole bunch of of those dice to open, and I'm wondering how that will impact the uh, the market value of my account. Because uh, if you look at dice, let's look at dice only. I know we're coming up on the end here, but uh, just bear with me for a second. You know, the um, the summoners are just doing great. You know, they're between twenty cents and forty-seven cents, uh, and then the monsters, and those are all rares. If we look at the like the legendary monsters, uh, regular foil, we're looking at uh, Cthulhu uh, through Oaken Behemoth. You know, four bucks. Three bucks to four bucks, you know, per legendary, which is nice, solid pricing. I don't know if it's profitable, really, uh, but it's certainly solid. You know, epics, epics are, you know, thirty-five to fifty-six cents, which is nice, which is good. Uh, you know, if we compare that to untamed, oops, compare that to untamed, untamed only. Let's go. Uh, you know, those are obviously much lower for epics. Uh, you know, that as low as 15 cents and as high as 66 cents. So, you know, the, uh, the dice are definitely holding their own and on, on the upper end of that. So that is always uh, good to see. Uh, still, you know, they are expensive. So I'm not, I'm still not quite sure uh, whether it's worth it to buy them on the secondary market or to buy dice and, and open them, you know, with potions and everything. But it's still early. Time will tell. And amazingly, that has come, gotten us to the end of the hour. Uh, it's been great having you all here for listening to the replay. Join us in the live chat. It's way more fun. And we'll talk to you next week. Mm -hmm.